What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to 1992. Today, I'm going to go over my top 10 favorite albums from that year. What was happening in 1992? Well, the Toronto Blue Jays won their first World Series. The Pittsburgh Penguins won their second Stanley Cup. The Washington Redskins won the Super Bowl. And the Chicago Bulls won the NBA Finals. Batman Returns was tops of the box office. And Bill Clinton is elected president. 1992 is not as deep as 1991. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah, 1992. This is the year I graduated high school. So this all the, you know, all those albums that came out in 91 were like exploding. Like the Chili's, Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana. And also like, you know, the Soundgarden, Pearl Jam stuff and the grungies and the country music was making. So it was it was different times. But yeah, this is, is not as deep a year, but there's some uh, there's some still some great albums in here. So let's get going with the honorable mentions. Up first, we've got King's X, King's X, Faith No More, Angel Dust, Bad for Good, Refugee, Neil Young, Harvest Moon. Katie Lang, Ingenue. Um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, my good friend Eric, uh, who I always talk about on here, he had uh, he had the Katie Lang CD, and I'm just like, what is Katie Lang? Because I remember her as she's more of a country singer. She's kind of like she used to ham it up in her videos a little bit. I'm like, what's her deal? And then at college, uh, I was doing. Uh, this, the class in his studio and the teacher was Scott Littlejohn and he had us listen to a song and then say, okay, what do you notice about this? What, what are the instruments you hear? And the song that he used was, uh, was constant craving from Ingenue. And, uh, at the time I'm like, this is actually not a bad song. And then I don't know what made me dip in. I think, you know what it was is after that album, and then she did, uh, all you can eat. And I think she did a, a album called, smoke or something to do with smoking and then Abe Laboreal Jr. had drummed on that and just oh so then I got into that and just hearing her voice and then got into this so I mean you know it's constant craving Miss Chatelaine she's just oh, she's my favorite female singer Katie Lang I love she's got a voice of an angel so enough rambling let's get on to the top 10 so up first my top number 10 we have Annie Lennox and Diva Another female artist, and I got heard this album from Eric as well. <laughs> um, I actually got to meet Annie Lennox back in 2015, I think January 2015. Um, my friend Susie and Michael, Michael is a hairstylist, and uh, her manager was good friends with Michael, so she needed a haircut because she was filming at the Orpheum Theater in Los Angeles. She was filming a PBS special. It was kind of like a, a, they did like a concert series, I think, that year. So she was getting her haircut. Susie and I were out, you know, not being in their space. And then we came back in and went to the, you know, I went to my room. She went to her room and I came back out. And then uh, Annie was just finishing up. She's just standing up to get her thing off. You know, she had, had set her haircut and she walks over and says hi annie lennox and she was so lovely she's actually tall she's about five nine i was very shocked but just the nicest person just i was so happy that she just was a sweetheart too it was, it was nice to meet her and then I, I think i'll put the photo i think i might have a photo of me and Susie when we went to the show and uh yeah that's my long tangent of a story that <laughs> was unnecessary. But this album, it has some really good songs. The Diva album. It's got some great tunes. It's got some, uh, it's a very well, it's a very good performance. I like, it's different. I mean, Eurythmics had some great stuff as well, but I was never that much into them other than the sort of hits. But this one, I really enjoyed this album. So, all right, I'll try to, I'll try to keep these uh, other stories a little shorter. So that's Annie Lennox at number 10 with Diva. At number nine, we have David Sanborn with Upfront. Now, this one has a little bit different sound than his regular albums. A lot of his other albums, the, the first one I got with Eric. Um, 
they were a little bit more studio based, like very clean, very tight sounding recordings. This one it had Steve Steve Jordan plays drums through the entire album, and he's a legend. But the sound was like it's a bit more of a room mic. You could sound like it was a bit more live, not just like you know a sterile and tight like a like inside a studio. And it has a, a bit more of a fun party vibe. There's a soul serenade and uh, beep 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 uh, beep uh, that one. And then they do another cover. What the heck was that? I just forgetting it. But another great album from uh, David Sanborn. So that's David Sanborn up front at number nine. At number eight, we got the Beastie Boys and Check Your Head. Good morning. Time to get up, and go to work. <laughs> this was these guys when they when they first came on the scene. They were like doing all their rapping. It was kind of all over the place. And then. Paul's Boutique, I didn't really get into it that much, but then when this came back out, they're playing their own instruments and they just had a very different vibe compared to anybody else. Nobody was really doing anything what these guys were trying to do and picking up instruments and learning them. It was, I don't know, this, this was kind of a magical time. And then I think Sabotage came out in 94 around there. But this, I think, was peak, peak Beastie Boys. Check your head. That's the Beastie Boys at number eight with Check Your Head. At number seven, we've got the Suicidal Tendencies and The Art of Rebellion. Track number two intro. Stand by stomach. Here comes Banana. Great album. Aggressive, tight. This is this is when these guys started to get like not as uh, thrashy and punky. This was a little bit more aggressive. So we got some great, great bass playing. Awesome bass playing. And obviously with Psycho Mike singing. So that is Suicidal Tendencies at number seven with The Art of Rebellion. At number six, we've got Joe Satriani and The Extremist. Summer Song, Friends, and then that, the last song on the album, that Simon Phillips on drums, I think Doug, we actually did that in the jazz program when our live performance, forget the name of that one, but uh, this is a very well-recorded album. The Bissonette Brothers through most of the, most of the recording. And, uh, yeah, this is, um, it's a great album. Or maybe that, maybe that song that was, that one, the moon, something moon. So I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it in below. But, uh, this, I, I think this is like, this is probably my favorite of Joe's albums as far as the recording quality. It just is tight and rocking and just great. So that's Joe Satriani at number five, The Extremists. At number four, we've got T-Ride with T-Ride. These guys only released one album. There's another one that was unreleased that came out. It's got some nice songs. And these guys had some cool cool tunes. This one, Andrew, my friend, discovered. He bought this one and Mark Vanilla EE ticket at the same time. And he said, oh, I think this guy's recorded this at home. The drums on this is by this the producer extraordinaire, Eric Valentine. I'm pretty sure it's Eric Valentine, the guy with the glasses. He, he drummed with these guys. He was only like 18. He just was kind of a prodigy. I think he was quite, quite talented. Obviously, the production stuff he does, he's, he's excellent. So he's got some great tunes. Jeff Tyson on guitar. Doesn't do any solos, but there's some instrumentals that are killer. He's got some awesome, awesome sweet runs and some, this guy's an awesome guitar player. So that's T-Ride with T-Ride at number five. At number four, we've got Pantera and the Vulgar Display of Power. This was my first Pantera album, and it kicks butt. These guys, this one, and then Far Beyond Driven. It's such a different sound. I don't know if it was like just his guitar or the drums or the way it's produced and mixed. These guys had a different sound, and it was <laughs> It is good. Not was good. It, well, I guess they're not around anymore, but these guys were awesome. So that's Pantera, vocal display of power at number four. At number three, another one from my friend Andrew. This is Dream Theater with Images and Words. My friend Andrew, I'm pretty sure at this time, he had like a still driving this uh, terrible red Hyundai Pony. And uh, this was in that car. I don't think he I don't think he took that out of the player for probably three months. That was on nonstop rotation. I put this on the other day and I forgot how much I enjoyed it. There's some awesome songs in there. Portnoy with the way he drums, how aggressive, but still he's he's a little bit. Uh, I don't want to say he's he's not sloppy, but he's not he's not like a Mike Mangini, 
but he has really he has such great en- energy like he really makes those songs move so if you've not heard it before give it a try this is uh number three dream theater images and words at number two we have prince and the symbol album this one was when i really started to like prince this is when i was like okay i digging this guy i don't know why i think it was around 93 it wasn't in 92 that i listened to it in 93 and i just like these guys got some great music and this one has some of the most you know morning papers and three chains of gold and um the continental and yeah, this is a this is a, such a great album. Uh, yeah, if if you've not checked out Prince, Prince Symbol album is a great place to start. So that's Prince Symbol at number two, and at number one, my most favorite album from the year nineteen ninety two by a landslide is Extreme and Three Sides to Every Story. This one, I remember seeing the video came out on Much Music. I'm like, what? They got a new album and. Like he was, it was a uh, rest in peace, and it was uh, Nuno was wearing that plaid thing. I'm like, oh god, these guys have gone grunge. Um, but this uh, start to finish is so well done. The, th- the th- my side, mine, yours, and then the truth. Uh, uh, everything but over the, under the sun, like is like sort of like a the 20 minute sort of like suite on the on the last part of the on the CD. I'll throw a link to it in the in the description below but it's beautiful it is so with the with the strings and the orchestral arrangement and you know like outdid himself this is such an awesome album i love it i loved it then people didn't like it they thought it was christiany i don't know maybe it's i listened to it because of the crunchy guitar man <laughs> but yeah if you want to get check out extreme you've not checked this album out, please check it out third side like is definitely definitely worth it so that's my list for 1992 i hopefully uh my long uh, rambling stories weren't too boring for you guys so in three days it'll be 1993 so until then i'll catch you guys later peace <laughs>